Okay, so the sketch I'm working on, I've added in a zoom here because a lot of you are interested in doing a zoom and the character assets I need to work with. I need a setting that I customize with lots of versions of my character. Uh, I need to build the assets for my character so that its head can pop out and so that it can grow a lot of different plants that can be grown out and then reabsorb. I will also need to build assets for storm clouds coming in and lightning and thunder, so different lighting effects. And then it will set to reset. So what I've done is I've taken my character design and I've gone back in a copy of what assignment two was and I'm re-engineering it. I'm making it into a mound, you know, into something I can use for this first part. And because it's a GIF animation, it's not full resolution, it's screen resolution. So feel free to kind of really mess with this and do kind of a quick and dirty job. So I'm doing a lot of clone stamping to kind of flesh this mound out, right? I can do pretty strong dodging and burning to get kind of a shadow underneath so it looks more mound-like. Again with mid-tones. Go a little bit stronger than six just to speed it up. So especially on this bottom edge, right? Because that's going to be in the water of my jungle setting. Then I can use dodge to brighten it up just in the midtones, just a little bit on the top. So I really get kind of the, that mound idea. Now, if I want to clean it up a little bit on the outside edge, I'm just going to use my lasso and I'm going to kind of jitter it a little bit. Kind of feather it out, just like I did to cut out my creature to begin with. Because this is before we see the feet or the head or anything else. Looks all good there. Looks all good back there. Maybe this a little bit. Okay, and then I'm going to say select inverse, just like I did with the cloud, and then duplicate command J. Oops, I did that wrong. I didn't want to invert it. So move it back before I did select inverse, and then duplicate it. And then turn off the one behind. So now I have a nice crisp edge around it, but maybe it's too crisp. So what do I do? I use the magic wand. I use select and mask. These are all of our old compositing skills. I want it to remember its old settings. It does. I say OK. And then you'll see what it does. It bites away at it and just softens it slightly. A little hint of green goes away for the most part. And now I have a good mound that I can use. So this is my first asset. Now, I need to build it at the right resolution. So what I'm going to do is go to my full background, open this with Photoshop, and see how large it is. Because this is going to be what my stage is, where I do my puppet show, where I bring all of my animation assets. And because I didn't create this, this isn't my fantasy landscape. I'll show you what you can do with found images. But at first I need to see its size. So it is 20 by 13 inches by 300. That's plenty big enough. I actually want to resample it to be 8 inches at its smallest. So that would be its height by 350 pixels per inch. And that will match well what I bring in. Now, because I got it from Pixabay, it's a huge file. And if I work it at full size, it's just going to take everything a lot longer. And it doesn't need to be full size because animations can only be shown at screen resolution. And our final file is going to have the smallest dimension be 8 inches, and it's only going to be 150 pixels per inch. So right now, um, 8 by 12 by 350, that's going to work great. It cuts the memory in half to only 33 megabytes. right? But Already, I need to whoops, I need to work with this 
and I need to establish just a really rough foreground, middle ground, and background because I didn't design this. I want to have what the foreground is, which is going to be this grass. Just roughly cutting it out. It's just a GIF animation. I can use shift to add to the selection. I can use option to select out chunks of it. Okay, this I'm going to duplicate command J. And this becomes my foreground. It's always good to label your layers. So foreground grass right there. Then I want to emphasize my middle ground. I don't need to cut around the grass again. I just need to say, okay, this water here, everything down from there, and maybe this tree canopy, right? All of this is my middle ground. Duplicate that from the background. And then my background, so there we have my middle ground. And then my background is there. Now, why does that matter? Well, when I bring in something new, this is a fun way to move files between Photoshop, right? I'm gonna sweep out the file I was working on. I'm gonna take that layer, drag and drop it into this new file. Right. Then I can use Command T and transform it. Because this is my stage. This is how big my creature needs to be, right? can be. I know I have a lot of resolution, but I am going to start building this first keyframe by putting these mounds in a lot. So Command T, shrink it down, put it in, like little huts. Then this is the beauty of animation or a digital animation, I'm going to put it behind the foreground grass and I'm going to duplicate it. Command J. I'm going to hit Command T again and move it out. And I want to start with the biggest ones and then go for smaller. Always taking resolution away. Right. Now I have two of them. Already with two of them I want to start customizing them a little bit because I'm picky. I'm just going to burn certain sides pretty aggressively, right? And then maybe the second one, I'm going to transform and flip horizontally. And then burn a little differently too. Right? Maybe dodge. So don't be shy with your compositing skills. You can make use of these things. I can also warp a little bit. Now, there's a lot to do with animation, so I don't want to get super picky. Because GIF animations are choppy anyway. But warping is going to be something we do a lot of in this to get little movements to work. Okay, now. I have two of them in. I could even put an overlay layer in. Do you guys remember that? So I put in a new blank layer and I fill it with middle gray, 50% gray. I set it to overlay. And then I can burn that and it will give me the shadows underneath the creatures. Okay, now for some of the bigger ones, I'm going to bring in this layer again and make it pretty much as big as it will ever be, like maybe this big, and just keep that asset there. And I'm going to mark that. That's my hero asset. So maybe I'll mark it green. And then I'm going to dodge and burn that. 
going to fit the scene, but I'm not trying to make it fully integrate. But because it's always going to be in water, I can also build in a duplicate of it, transform that duplicate, flip it vertically, move it down, Gaussian blur it, I'm going to make a reflection in the water. Right, and then take its opacity down. And then I'm going to burn it a little bit. Maybe take its opacity back up a little. And then maybe set it, actually, let's try to set it on overlay. Nope, too much. Pin light. Nope, soft light. Yeah, that's better. All right, so now check it out. This is now, I'm going to make this green and call this the reflection. Just building assets, making lots of duplicates. And hero lump. I'm going to call these, or hero mound. So a hero asset is the one that you always go back to to make new assets. And you want it to be as large as possible within reason. And so now I can take both of these. In fact, I can even adjust the hero color. All this kind of thoughtful work you can do ahead of time is gonna make animating a lot easier later. I'm gonna play with its color balance. Get it to fit the scene a little bit better. That helps. And then some of this big dodging and burning. Get the kind of that dappled light. That helps. Maybe even, that's really strong, burning the shadows just a bit. To make it more dramatic. You can always go to levels and just push those a little bit. Okay, so now I've got the hero mound and the hero reflection. If I select both of those by holding down shift, I can duplicate both of those and then transform them smaller, like so. And now I have the reflection and the mound all together. So for these bigger assets, I want to put these everywhere, right? Like I might transform this, flip it horizontally. I might just stretch it a little bit, tweak it a little bit, warp it a little bit, or distort it. You can't warp it if it's multiple layers, but distort's going to work really well to make these mounds look separate. Right? And then I can move these around in different places. I'm going to put that one there. And then I see my foreground grass. Let me cut that out a little bit more. Just building assets. I'm going to use the magic wand. Try to have it be contiguous. Hold down shift, maybe up its tolerance to 66. There we go, and cut away some of this grass. Doesn't need to be perfect, but it's gonna sell the illusion of this space. And this is all simply to get that first keyframe of my storyboard set up correctly so I can animate more fully. 